Loving Father, we thank you for your word. May that word dwell richly in our hearts. Amen. Please do be seated. He was in the world, yet the world did not know him. I'd like to amend those words to bring them into today and to say, he is in the world, yet the world, or at least a large part of the world, does not know him. That is perhaps especially true in this coronavirus world, when people ask, where is God? Or why does God, if there is a God, allow this to happen? Or why doesn't God, if there is a God, stop this pandemic? All very good questions. All questions which deserve serious and considered answers, or perhaps more accurately, attempted answers. So this morning I'd like to offer a few attempted answers. Answers which are neither definitive nor exhaustive. Why does God allow this to happen? Why doesn't God stop this pandemic? It's a very heartfelt question. A question that's often cried out when any disaster strikes an individual or a community or even, in this case, the world. It's a question which harks back to our childhood days, times when we hurt ourselves, bashing our knees with another tumble, bumping our heads on some solid object, cutting a finger with a sharp knife that we should not be touching. Times when we cry to mummy or daddy to stop it hurting. Times when mummy or daddy make everything all right with a kiss. It's a question that wants somebody bigger, somebody stronger, somebody cleverer to take away the pain to make everything okay once again. But let's imagine for a moment that God did step in and stop this happening that God did step in and take away this pandemic, take away the pain and the suffering. Where then does that leave us? Wouldn't we then have to ask questions like, why doesn't God stop the flood that threatens our village? Why doesn't God stop the hand of the young boy that wields a knife to kill? Why doesn't God stop my dropping the paving slab on my foot? Why doesn't God? Made in the image and likeness of God, we have choices. Do I eat the forbidden fruit or not? Without the ability to make choices, choices which can hold positive outcomes, choices which can hold negative outcomes, Without the ability to make choices, what would we be? Now you might wonder, in this answer, am I suggesting that this pandemic is a consequence of our choices? In part, I am. The choices we, as a people, have made about how we live in this complex, rich and beautiful world, have had and have far-reaching consequences. Consequences that are often far beyond our limited understanding. We chose to become farmers rather than hunter-gatherers. So we cleared trees, we dammed streams, we reduced our diet to what we could easily grow. And the consequences of such simple decisions were and are unseen and far-reaching, both for ourselves and for many living creatures, unseen consequences. 
We devised clever fertilizers and pesticides to increase the yield of our crops, benefiting both the farmers and the consumer, but also damaging the soil on which, on which this world and its wonderful diversity of life depend. Unseen consequences. We build factories. We design ingenious ways to travel. We build ships and aeroplanes to move all kinds of goods and peoples across this world. All of which carries unseen consequences. Some positive, some negative. Made in the image and likeness of God, we have choices. Sadly, we too often do not have, nor do we seek, God's wisdom. Not finding a mummy or daddy to sort everything out for us, we might cry out, where is God? Where is God? And that brings me back to John in my amended version of his words. Where is God? He is in the world. Yet the world does not know him. It can seem too glib and even too callous to simply say God is with us in this mess. If God is with us in this mess, where is the evidence? We don't need to look very far. We don't need to look for the spectacular. We don't need to seek a miracle. Made in the image and likeness of God, the evidence is simply in this likeness. A likeness which we can all reflect and which indeed so many people do reflect. Hospital staff, the doctors, the nurses, the porters, the cleaners, the cooks, putting themselves at risk to help those in need. Shop workers in essential shops, putting themselves at risk so that others can continue to buy what they need. Those who deliver the shopping order, the post, the Amazon parcel. Neighbours who do the shopping for the person across the street. Family members who look after the children so mum and dad can go to work scientific advisors and politicians who try their very best to give the best advice and to make the best decisions. Those who gather around and uphold those whose life has been shattered by the loss of a loved one. The list goes on and on and on. In all of these people, in all of these acts, we find God. God's image and likeness made visible. God right here in this mess. He's in the world, yet the world does not know him. If you simply look at the good in this world, the kindness, the generosity, the desire to support and help, we will see God in action. A large part of any tragic event, from stubbing our big toe to this pandemic, from grazing a knee to climate change, is a consequence of our actions, often with unseen consequences. In all tragic events, we will see God right there, right there in the help and sacrifice that we can offer and which so many do indeed freely offer. Made in the image and likeness of God, we are all called to show God right here in this world today.